He's up against Marco Fu of Hong Kong. I think we know who uh, the supporters here are going to be supporting. Robertson failed to get past the second round of the first two stages of this tournament, but we know what great form he's in. He's looking to win back-to-back -back ranking events, but of course Marco Fu, and our very tough to of campaigner. And Michael Edouard. The 14th of July, Bastille Day, le 14 juillet, before, la fête nationale. It all starts. Uprising of the modern Why French nation. And Leo Scully and the, the referee, the terrific trophy. Of the thunder from down under continues. Neil Robertson, the world number one. And alongside me is the voice of Australian snooker, Robbie Folvari. And what about the bumper crowd in here to support the local hero? Well, it's a packed stadium. This Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Who's got frame. the job to do? Neil Robertson to break. They've all come to see Neil. So it's best of 17 frames, first to nine to become champion. Joe Johnson is alongside me. Obviously, Joe, Neil Robertson is going to start favourite, but Marco Fu, very tough campaigner. Yes, absolutely. And if he gets caught in the safety game, Neil Robertson, Marco Fu is a very, very good safety player. You can never underestimate him. Although Neil Robertson's got a great record in finals. And as you said already, He'll start out favourite, especially in front of his own crowd. In great form, Neil Robertson. Marco Fu, provisionally back in the top 16, so he's going to feel on top of the world. Well, oh, um, I miss. Tim Neil looks very Fu. fast, but not quite that fast. A lot of players have been saying how good the conditions have been. Neil Robertson has had a tough path to the final to beat Mark Selby in the semis. In fact, he turned up here, yes, on home soil, but uh, we had a cold at the start of the week. He said uh, he didn't feel at all well. He would have pulled out of any other tournament, but not this one, of course. But he's pleased he didn't now. Great pops. What a great opening pop from Neil Robertson. Well, he looks uh, like he's fully restored to health. That was a trademark pot, wasn't it, from Robertson? Could have had the right ball replaced. Chance to take on that, take on that long red. Played the white in such a position as not to leave anything except the red he was playing on. Nevertheless, great pot. Oh, he didn't play that one well. Yes, you expect him to pop them. Never easy under the cushion, the cue ball. But you do expect him to pop them. A nice, easy opener now for Marco Fu. One. Yes, Fu as well as uh, had a pretty tough path through to the final. But Ken Doherty in the first round. Sean Murphy, good win in the last 16. Dominic Dale and then Robert Milkins, who's been in great form, of course, in the semi-finals. He's only won one ranking title before. That was 2007 Grand Prix. He was runner-up uh, last season in the German Masters. Eight. Nine. Just come a little straight on the black. Would have liked a nice angle to go into them. Bring a few more reds into play. But a bit too straight, so he's going to have to play for that last loose red. <coughs> now he's got to leave Six an two. angle this time. <coughs> the black or the pink.
17. Choice of both. Well, has he been fortunate? 24. Looking at the red, if it will pass the other reds into the right corner. Looks very tight. He's right behind it and he's not sure. Be a bit easier if you could just play the red in like that. Michael Foote, yes, he wasn't sure, so he decided to play the safety, and it's certainly a good safety. Yes, he's got a great temperament, Fu. Nothing much rattles him. Doesn't betray uh, much outward emotion. Very strong safety game. He was previously coached by Terry Griffiths, now coached by Terry's son, Wayne Griffiths, who's based in Hong Kong. Of course, pretty much the only time for Neil Robertson that he gets to come home now because the circuit obviously is uh, pretty much 12 months of the year. As I say, first two stagings of the tournament, best he did was a last 16. So be delighted, will Neil, whatever happens today, to have reached the final, as of course will the audience here. Yes, the pattern's been set for this frame already. Knocked in a great red, Robertson, then missed the easy blue. It could so easily have been end of frame, that. And that would have set a different pattern. safety shot, opening the reds, coming off them thick. <laughs> and that's the kind of game I like to see Neil Robertson playing. <coughs> Such an attacking player. And once he does get the balls open, if he gets in, more than likely be end of frame. And so, of course, if Marco Fu gets in, He's put Marco Fu under pressure with that safety shot, that attacking safety shot. Well, he felt he had no choice but to have a go. He could have left something easier. There is a red that will go to the right corner, left middle. But position not guaranteed. I have to play up for the blue. Oh, one of the bark colours. One. And that's a pretty good shot. That was a control shot he played there.
could have done with just coming a, a little Six. further there. He's going to be slightly hampered over the blue at this red into the corner. <laughs> in the more difficult red and this is missable. I uh, still expected him to get it though. Showing a few signs of early nerves here. Neil Robertson missed that easy blue. Last time he came to the table. This wasn't too difficult. It was the shot previous though when he was on the blue. Should have been easier on the red. Good pot. One. And a good kiss. Yes, I think from Robertson's point of view, it's understandable if there are early nerves. I think uh, once he gets himself involved in the match and kind of forgets where he is, then things might change. But uh, he looked a little edgy early on. Marco Fu, of course, from Hong Kong, although uh, he learned his snooker in Canada Six. when he was a teenager. He was educated in Canada and educated in more ways than one because that's where he learned match snooker. Seven. And that's okay. He's got a red in bulk. He knows that uh, the vast majority of the audience here is supporting his opponent, but he doesn't care about that. He's got a very good record for against the likes of Ronnie O'Sullivan, John Higgins. 13. It doesn't seem to be about who he's playing. It's always really about him and his performance. And there is a big disparity between his best and his worst. When he plays his best stuff, he's uh, a world beater. When he plays his worst, anyone can beat him. Yes, he doesn't have a great B game, does he? But it's still, when he's on form, when he's seeing them, it's a match for anybody. And that split OK. Chose to go into them rather than play for the loose reds. Ninety. Head-to-head -head between them, it's two each. Fu uh, once beat Robertson at the Masters, 6-5. So uh, that's a high-profile high victory. 27. Takes him 40 points in front. And F loose reds left. It's been a strange frame, this one. Neil Robertson's had two good chances. 43. Applause for the 50 break, the first 50 break of this final. 40. Always nice to see the audience clapping a 50 break. It used to happen quite a lot in the UK. And applause for game ball. Well, 
I'm sure most are supporting Robertson, but this is the only chance all year they have to watch live snooker. So they want to see a good match with some high quality play. I notice in the front row, uh, Dave Jackson, who every year comes to the Crucible, where he also sits in the front row, but he is Australian. And has travelled across country to watch this tournament. Fifty-five. Well, in any match, I guess you just want to settle down as early as you can, and it looks like Fu has done that. Fifty-six. Can't quite make the century. Okay. Sixty-four. Now he is a heavy scorer, though. Fu last season he made forty-six centuries. That's a lot. In fact, it's one more than Robertson made. Seventy-one. And he wasn't in the top sixteen. Mm. Seventy-three. Says something for him. He's a top 16 player, though, isn't he? Seven Trouble is, there's about 30 <laughs> top 16 players. Well, I think if you polled the other players and said, right, write down the top 16, in your opinion, I think most of them would have him in it. But, of course, it doesn't work like that. I think it's the inconsistency Thank that you. we mentioned. But he's been uh, very consistent this week, and he's made a good start to this final. Robertson had a couple of chances, but it's Marco Fu. He's going to win the opening frame. 85. 91. They call Neil Robertson the thunder from down under, but it's Marco Fu hoping to steal his thunder here today. He's made a good start, 98 clearance. Nothing wrong with that. Marco Fu then leads 1-0, but a long way to go. It's first to nine. He becomes Australian Open champion here in Bendigo. So Marco Fu won, Neil Robertson nil. Yeah, Australian Goal Fields <laughs> Open. First to nine to become champion. Mentioned Fu's won one ranking title, but he's also uh, been runner up in the UK Championship and the Masters and a semi finalist at the World Championship. Neil Robertson looking to become the first player for 10 years. 10 years to win back-to-back -back ranking titles in the same season. Ronnie O'Sullivan was the last to do it in the same season. That was uh, 2003 European Open and Irish Masters. So it just shows you the way the titles have been shared round since. Yes, and how tough the game is. Great story, though, isn't it, for Robertson? You know, he left this very country when he was a young man with £500 in his pocket to turn professional. He's come back here this year as world number one. Yeah, what a great achievement that is. That's a poor safety shot, though, from Marco Fu. Tried to get that cue ball dead on the cushion behind the black. Just shows you how far out it was with his safety there. A half chance then for Neil Robertson. One. Nice pot. And he's left a nice angle on the black to go into them. He could play for the loose red, but... Well, he's got the angle. He may choose to go into them. Didn't quite catch them full enough. The arc on the cue ball just didn't turn soon enough. 
Caught them too thin. And no easy red to play for. He can go for the red to the left corner, but the cue ball's going into the pack of red, so wouldn't expect him to go for that. crowd in here. Look at that for a picture. Neil Robertson, it. Good cue ball. where you need to get the cue ball to put your opponent under pressure. Pace again. This time you can see the edge of the pack on the right side. Just got to be careful not to catch it too thick. It really is nice to see the Australian crowd there sporting both players. Good safety there from Marco Fu, appreciated by the audience. May have to try and swerve this a little. Well, he did the same in the last frame. Opened the pack of reds, playing the safety shot thick, and he's done it again. And he's put a lot of pressure on Marco Fu now. Look at the reds. Tap on the table. He was forced into taking one on in the last frame. Took it on and missed it. And he did leave Robertson a chance. Made six from it. scheme of things that's not too bad if he takes the red along the cushion difficult to get out for the black <coughs> too straight that red along the cushion
thought he'd hit that a little slow. Neil Robertson, but he's managed to cover the reds on the left side. And again, he may be forced into taking this long red onto the right corner. Ultra thin red here. He's got to nearly miss the ball here. Oh, that's an excellent safety. Good shot. Doesn't get any better than this. it a little thick <coughs> oh, surely he'll take this red on he's got the cue power to screw that white ball back towards Bork Wasn't anywhere near the pot, unfortunately, for Marco Fu. I think he's left the red on to the right centre. One. Yeah, I think when it comes to both break building and safety, these two are about level, but uh, the one department where I think you'd have to say Robertson would be in front is long potting. It's not to say Fu can't knock them in, he can, but maybe not as regularly as uh, Robertson does. Yeah, I'd probably agree with that as well. Terrific long ball potter. I'm not scared of going for them. Well, gave that one plenty of thought. He knew how important that ball was. That's got him in amongst the reds now. Well, he is the reason this tournament is on. He won the World Championship 2010 and uh, coincided with Barry Hearn taking over World Snooker. And almost immediately he had meetings with Australian representatives and a year later this tournament took uh, began 2011 won by Stuart Bingham and then last year by Barry Hawkins and of course uh, both those two players uh, went from strength to strength after that Barry runner up at the crucible a couple of months back just shows you what confidence can do but they've all got this man to thank because he's the reason the Australian Open is on at all Couldn't hold for the black. <coughs> Pink and blue, not available to the right middle. Well, he missed a shot like this in the last frame. Ten. Red to the left corner. Missed it on the right hand ang angle as well, looking at it. But not this time. 11. 
That was an excellent positional shot. And pot. Dearly like to get onto the black. Yes, the, the thing is, he knows he's playing well, doesn't he? He's not come here looking for form. He's come here in some of the best form of his life. I think uh, just a little bit of edginess in the first frame, but that's understandable wherever you're playing. Well, the black must pass the reds into the left corner, and that's a bonus. He's in amongst them now. 70. It's funny you're saying about how fair the crowd are, which is absolutely right. Uh, one of Neil's first big TV matches in his career was at Wembley 2004. He qualified for the Masters at the old Wembley Conference Centre, and he drew Jimmy White. A Londoner. Well, you can imagine how fair the crowd were there. <laughs> he, he said himself that uh, he never experienced anything like it, but of course you learn from those sort of experiences. Because <coughs> that was a bear pit, that place. Particularly if you're up against Jimmy. Of course, he's since won the Masters when it moved to to Alexandra Palace. Now, may okay. well play the cannon to the red, directly above the red here. It doesn't need to. And again, it's all about choice, this. Three. Decided to play the cannon. can now put this frame away in one visit then he's in, uh, involved in the match he's arrived in the match Forty-one. grew up in uh, Melbourne where his father ran a snooker club that's where he started playing. Forty-eight. One of the reasons Snooker had dried up a little bit in Australia before he came along was because Eddie Charlton, the uh, great player <laughs> of the 70s and 80s, had uh, by then retired. He's sadly now no longer with us. Forty-nine. <coughs> yeah. But you do need these figureheads. We've seen it with Ding in China, with his success. Yeah, James Watanabe was another one in Thailand. But what a great ambassador for the game this guy is. Great attacking style. Yes, and that was a difficult shot, made to look easy. Appreciated again by the crowd. Still needs another colour off of this red. 57. Got a great attitude, he's uh, relentlessly cheerful. Always positive, even when things go wrong, he tries to make it into a positive. And... Uh, it looks like it's drawn level here. Yes, and done it in style. Funnily enough, it was the poor safety that gave Marco Fu a chance at that long red, which he missed. 64. And some distance.
Well, in terms of ranking titles, he's the most successful player from outside the 71. UK. He's won eight. Of course, the latest was a couple of weeks back at the Wushi Classic. 72. But uh, I'm sure he's not going to be on eight for that long. I'm sure there's plenty more to come. Marco Fu will be hoping not today, of course. Seventy-seven. Seventy-eight. Oh, well, that's a, a shame. I'm sure the crowd are hoping to see a century, but the main thing is they've seen Neil Robertson win his first frame with that break of 78. He draws level with Marco Fu. It's one frame all. The top frame. New Robertson to break. So frame three, it's one apiece here in the Australian Goldfields Open final. Thank you. In Bendigo. Not all the top stars of the game enter the tournament, but uh, it's right up there for Neil Robertson as one of the, the most important events for him. Marco Fu as well, as I say, just one ranking title to his name. If he could win today, then so early in the season, what a springboard that could be, as we saw with Barry Hawkins last year. Because there's no rest for the wicked these days. They'll be back in action mm. next week in Rotterdam, Netherlands, for the latest European Tour event. Yes, there's no quiet periods now in snooker. Steve Davis was saying that he wishes he was just starting out again, as I do. Great to play in so many tournaments, so many chances to win. No time to dwell upon any losses you may have. Half chance then, red to the far corner. Couldn't be tempted. And I'm surprised he could have pulled the cue ball back for the black. He could have played low on the black. He wouldn't have left anything. Chance to win the frame. It's a good safety. Just sometimes I think Marco Fu just plays the safety game a little too much. Gets caught up in the safety. He's such a great potter. And break builder, as David said, 46 centuries last season. Well, that's a mistake. He's forced the mistake. Caught it all wrong. Red will cut to the corner. Or he could play the double. Looks like the double. And it's there. And that's what I'm saying. If you go for your shots. He hasn't left anything. And a chance to win the frame now.
problem with this red to the left corner. He can't get close to the black. No, sir. Well, what a let off for Neil Robertson. Fu pay for that mistake. It'll really hurt him. Oh, he got a big kick there. Wanted to leave an angle on the black to be able to go into the reds with the red over that left corner. But this is too much of an angle. Well, it doesn't matter where the circuit pitches up in the world, kicks remain a problem. Mark Selby against Robertson had one at a vital time in the semi-final when he was looking good to make it four each. Yes, it didn't affect the pot, but it did affect going into the pack of reds. 24. 25. And hasn't left a nice angle here. Well, has he spotted a plant? If he has, the reds are going to be all over the place. Position not guaranteed, but concentrating on the plant, and there it goes. Unfortunate. He's not on a colour. Well, that was a frame winner. If he'd, if he'd got on a colour. Yeah, that split beautifully, hadn't they? But there's no colour, just a good safety. And with that red down by the bark end, safety not easy. Maybe if you could leave the cue ball on the bark line by the green. Ideally, he'd like, like to play him behind the brown, but I don't think he can hit the pink thin enough. <coughs> Doesn't want to leave him a chance and that red to the left middle, the one by the bark line. Very, very unfortunate to have finished where he has. Yeah. 
Martin Robertson, 33. Yes, would have liked to have hid that red near the yellow. Well, the red must have gone. It must have passed the yellow. So that was a half chance for Marco Fu. No joy there. Big shot, this one. Frame loser if he misses it. Could be a frame winner if he gets it. That's a great shot. And a great cannon to hold for the black. And you'd expect him to win the frame from here. Look at the reds. Nine. <coughs> well, the risk of uh, putting the mockers on him, one thing that has changed in his game over the years is his concentration in this sort of situation holds up a lot better than it used to when he first turned pro. Sort of half a thought of having done the hard work in the frame, occasionally you throw the odd shot in, but uh, it doesn't seem to happen now. Seventeen. Yeah, he's become the all-round player, hasn't he? Don't get to be number one in the world without having it all. He's got it. Twenty-four. Yes, his 25. concentration on the table is not the problem. It's his concentration off the table. Already this season, he's had a few incidents down the years, but already this season, Bushy Classic qualifies. He turned it without his waistcoat. Promptly borrowed Matt Seltz and made a one-four-seven in it, and of course went on to win the tournament. Thirty-two. It's worth saying, if he if he hadn't have found a replacement, he wouldn't have been able to play, because there is a dress code. Four. Two snookers needed, but Marco Fu is not going to get the chance to play for any. 41. And he just seems to be in a better rhythm now. Robertson. Forty-seven. 
with all of last season's ranking titles were shared between different players. This is the second this season. Robertson won the first in Bushy. It would be a fine achievement to win back to back. The great Stephen Henry once won five in a row, but uh, those days are long 62. gone. Sixty-three. Yes, and he did it in an area where there were outstanding players. Williams, John Higgins, Ronnie O'Sullivan, to name just three. Sixty-seven. Ken Doherty, Steve Davis was more at his best then. Jimmy White. I know there's lots of players I've missed there, but just to reinforce that Stephen Hendrick, in my opinion, the best player. But this guy, 74. when he's on song, he's every bit as good to watch. Yes, it's, Steve, it's Stephen Hendry who's uh, 79. really changed the way the game's played. It's so attacking now. He's the reason, and this is the result, this sort of snooker. And Neil Robertson... Uh, has really come to the party now in this final. 78 in the last frame. And uh, terrific 92 clearance in this third frame. So the local man is in front. Robertson leads Marco Fu. 2-1. Players returning after the mid-session interval. Marco Fu made an 80 break in winning the fourth frame. It's 2-2, therefore, in this Australian Open final. Nine frames the target for victory. Always had the feeling of uh, a close encounter. <coughs> and so far, that's how it's shaping up. He's been high quality. Well, we know he's got plenty of bottle. Neil Robertson. And uh, he's not going to be rushed here before the restart. Thank you. The fifth frame. New Robertson to break. So two all, and this is frame five. Yes, he'd like to play off the pack of reds there and miss the green, but it's too risky. If he cannons into the green, he leaves the red on to the right middle. Problem with playing that shot, if he hits it too hard, it finishes up over the pocket, just like that. Could you make sure the flash and your cameras are off, please? <gasps> the flash just as Neil was playing the shot. Well, looks like the black will go to the left corner. Not easy to get onto it. One. And he's come a little too far. Caught the red too thin. He's got a straight blue with choice of reds to the left corner.
Michael Fu, one. Right. He played it in such a way as to try and block the pocket if he missed it, but he hasn't done it. He hasn't covered it. So a chance for Neil Robertson. I uh, would have liked the red to have gone straight into the pocket. He would have had the black there then. <coughs> Not easy, this blue. Easier for a left handed, uh, a right handed player, but left handed player, well, he's taking the yellow one. That's how difficult the blue is. It looks easy on television. It's not. Tended player would have played the blue already by now, but that just shows you the difference in the right and left handed side of the tables. Yeah, it was never easy, and he had to work that cue ball. Neil Robertson, boy. Fortunately, he didn't get on the red as he intended. So this is a tough pot. And if he plays the cannon to the red next to the black to try and develop the black, it makes it even harder. Well, he got the cannon. He's freed the black. It's a good attacking shot, that, by Marco Fu. If he could play this red in such a way as just to nudge a couple of reds out, just try and try and play on the black. Good pot and a good nudge on the red. Another great attacking pot there by Marco Fu. Attempted to bring more reds into play. Twelve. Another attacking shot, but this is a tough red to the middle. And not easy to get onto a colour, even if he gets the red. Oh. 
And it just shows you how tight those pockets are, doesn't it? That looked in all the way for me. One. I didn't have any idea where the cue ball was going. Just had to concentrate on the pot. And again, he's been unfortunate, so just the safety. Another day, it could have skimmed off the pack of reds and been on the black. Robertson, one. Little energy boost there with that banana. He's caught it too thick. So this is a chance for Neil Robertson. Choice of blue or black. Well, even the pink. So he's got the reds as he wants them. Oh, but he's got to get the black. Here, Robertson. Oh, what a miss. And that could be costly. Just shows nothing is guaranteed. Pinpoint accuracy is what you need. Because uh, these pockets are not generous. But not quite uh, as agonising a missed black as uh, the one Michael White missed in the qualifiers a few weeks ago because he was on 140 at the time. Missed the last black. Decided to go up for the black, try and get the black back on its spot. But he could have played the for the pink or the blue. But now he's got the black back on its spot. He's got a great chance now of winning this frame. Eight. I should say, by the way, in uh, Michael White's defence, it wasn't an easy black because uh, that had to bring the pink off the side cushion, so he wasn't plumb on it. No. Of course, Ken Doherty uh, famously did that in the Masters final. No one's let him forget it since, least of all me. Marco Fu has the distinction of having made the first 147 ever shown live on the internet. That was back in uh, 2000, the Scottish Masters. 
Made another one in the World Open, 2000, 2012 in the qualifiers. 50. And he's racking up the centuries, 294 for his career. Just seems when he gets in that rhythm, it's when he looks unstoppable. And I think also one of his great strengths is you never really know what he's feeling. He doesn't gesture. Some players, you know when you've got when you've got them because you can see it in the way they behave, but you never see that from Fu. We've seen a few hell raisers down the years in this game. Marco Fu, not one of them. His politeness exemplified. Kept his head down, he's kept his mouth shut, he just oh. played the game. <coughs> and played it well. I always think he could have won more than what he has done. <coughs> Certainly been good enough. But he played at top level in an age where there was a lot of good players. Of course, uh, what we found out recently is it's never never too late. 35, but 46. We've seen plenty of players in that age bracket doing well the last year or so. Anxious looks from that man there. Will that black he missed that easy black into the right corner? Will it cost him? It should do. 47. Two loose reds there would be enough. Yes, well, this black's going to put him uh, 54 in front with 51 on. But he knows if he doesn't pot another red, then obviously pot Robertson's going to come back with needing just one snooker. So really needs to pot this. Well, you're right. He did I need to pot four, that. Four. This game isn't over yet. Yes, frame ball is just a, a piece of terminology. It doesn't mean you've won the frame. No, it just means your opponent needs snookers. And we've seen it many times. One snooker. One. Very achievable. <coughs> so a couple of reds, a couple of blacks here, and a snooker on that last red. And it could be a big turning point in this match. One of the blacks. Eight. Okay. Nine. Now, just coming around to have a look where he wants to be on this red to send it down the table and leave the cue ball. In behind the black. <coughs> 60. Now he wants this red in the middle of the table. Or at least well away from the cushion. Well, he wants a snooker yeah, first. 16. And that was a careless shot there from Neil Robertson. He tried to get that cue ball 
tight in behind the black. And in trying to do so, he's missed the snooker. A let off. Oh, what about that? What a cut. What a cut that was. But what a chance Robertson had to lay that snooker in behind the black. So uh, Foos dodged a bullet there, missing the red to the middle in the first place. Yeah, it was two chances, wasn't it, David? He missed that black earlier on in the frame. Missed the easy snooker. And he's definitely paid the price now. Well, it's the thing about long matches, isn't it? We've seen it so many times. There's time for You're momentum welcome. to shift. Robertson was uh, playing really well to go 2-1 up, but Marco Fu now is going to be back in front. 15. And the frame. So a really interesting start to this Australian Open final. Marco Fu has his nose back in front. He leads Neil Robertson 3-2. <coughs> well, when they came out for this final session, Marco, Marco Fu led 5-3. Neil Robertson has won the first of the evening. So uh, it's just 5-4 now. Fu, though, still in front as he breaks off in frame 10. When he won his uh, other ranking title, his first ranking title, 2007 Grand Prix, he beat Ronnie O'Sullivan in the final. So if he were to win this one, again, he would have done it the hard way, playing the world number one. on the green has left a half chance for Marco Fu yeah great pot Done with a kind of kiss. The green is potable to the yellow pocket, but the cue ball's going into the brown. Marco Fu, one. Yes, I think that was favourite. Marco well, four. it could have been worse. Cue ball could have stayed down this end of the table. Left to red on. Tough pot this to the left corner if he decides to take it on. Although if he can play on to the black, wouldn't leave anything.
Yep, well played. Yes, he is very solid in all departments, Fu. He is knocking in the long ones. He's uh, made some big breaks. His safety's been good. And then all the attributes, of course, you need to win tournaments. Yeah, and, and as you've said, David, he seems to play better against the absolute top players, doesn't he? Well, has he gone too far? Played for the red directly above the black. <coughs> Has it gone too far? It looks pretty tight to me, that. Again, he's right behind the shot, so he'll know. But from there, it doesn't look as though he can get it. He could say that's a let off for Neil Robertson. It could have been end of frame had he been on that red. Oh, big look at the balls there, yellow, green, and brown. What a big target to get that cue ball in behind them and at the same time open the reds. Well, a, a little fortunate to have passed the green. Could so easily have cannoned it. <coughs> Looks like you can see the edge of that red to be able to get the cue ball back to Bork. But he's got to avoid the red and the blue. Oh, an excellent safety. A great job. And if he hasn't got the snooker, he's a little unfortunate. Good old Leo there, just having a look, just in case he has to replace the cue ball. Certainly appreciate the safety game, this Australian crowd. Another good safety shot there from Marco Fu. Well, a lot of them were probably brought up on Eddie Charlton. One of the great uh, tacticians. Another Australian who never knew when he was beaten. Yes, and doing uh, commentary for the local uh, television is Robbie Falvari, former World Billiards champion and... Uh, he was a, a tough as old boots snooker player as well, very methodical. Well, that was a good containing safety shot from Neil Robertson. Tap on the table there from Marco Fu.
didn't want to catch the middle pocket bump. And that was a mistake. But he's been fortunate. Well, you've got to be careful of the push here. He's thinking of playing that shot. There we go, then. He's going to attempt it. Cue up in the air. better of it but he could have played a better safety shot than that I bet Leo Scullion was relieved because it's uh, very difficult for the referees to always gauge whether it is a push shot that was a very careless safety shot Neil Robertson played a moment ago left himself in big trouble Who hasn't quite got the snooker? Very fortunate. Well, they can't be split uh, on the safety stats. 78% success for each of them. Just thinking about Robbie Falvari, he previously held the record for the longest ever best in nine frame match which was just over seven hours but it actually was broken in the qualifiers for this tournament by uh, Barry Pinches and Simon Bedford broke the record uh, but it took a while broke it by uh, just over ten minutes or so and uh, it was 4-0 in the match to Bedford so although it took three hours to reach the interval I'm sure the referee was thinking well only gonna be one more frame well there were another five and it finished at three in the morning <clears throat> well, in catching that red too thin, he's given Robertson a chance here to the left corner. And he'll have to get this. He'll be leaving reds on if he misses it. Good pot. May have to take the brown. handed player but if he can't reach it then maybe just drop the blue in he'd have the red over the pocket well I 
think he, he thought he'd missed that. Six. I think one thing you have to credit Neil Robertson with is uh, how well he shrugged off that defeat to Robert Milkins at the World Championship. He had such a good season. He went to the Crucible as one of the big favourites to win it. Lost first round, but uh, it doesn't seem to have affected him. He's been in all three finals so far this season. Runner up in Bulgaria, one in Wushi. Here he is again in a final, so doesn't seem to have had any lasting impact on him. He did get rather sucked into the tactical stuff there, so maybe it's made him just uh, attack a little more. Well, he's on a red, but. He's covered the black into both pockets now. Pink's available. Thirty. Well, that was a super confident shot he's played there to play for the black into the bot corner. This is a tough pot to take on. Oh, that's a great pot. And well appreciated lump up success look at 84% for Robertson, 62% for Fu. And that's pretty good going, that. Yes, 84% is excellent. And uh, it, it does help when you just fancy that you're going to pop them, which he clearly does. He's not thinking Thanks about <coughs> what can go wrong if he misses. He's thinking what can go right if he gets them, and he is getting them. Like I said earlier, one of his great traits is how positive he is in general, in life and in snooker. There's so much scope in this game, as we know, for things to go wrong, particularly in a long match. Came out tonight trailing by two frames, looking here to try and level up again. Twenty nine. Yeah, just a gentle cannon on that red. Perfectly played. Thirty six. Thirty seven. Well. He got a kick there, and that took the pace out of the cue ball. And not quite as easy now to get position. <laughs> yes, he knew he was always leaving himself with this long red. Long straight red across the table. Tough red, this. Nicely played. Back in prime position. Fifty two. Uh, needs to leave an angle on the black. Fifty three.
looks okay. Just a gentle cannon again. And he's played to open them. And that, well, it's worked out okay, but this isn't a gimme along the cushion. 60. 47 points in front. So it still needs a couple of reds. And these pockets, as David said earlier, are tight. And the reds are there for the taking. A couple of dodgy reds over by the right, co right side cushion. As we look at this red again, just came away from the cushion. Stayed out. What a steal this would be. One. Yes, every World Snooker tournament has the same templated pockets, but uh, we've seen <coughs> over the course of the uh, last few seasons that some tables do seem to play tighter than others. We've seen balls go in, which have surprised us. We've seen balls stay out, which have surprised us. <coughs> it. Nine. Well, work to do, but uh, a minute ago he was in his seat. Yes, yeah, well, well, I had the position played off <laughs> for the two reds. <coughs> and the most difficult. Red of the two is the one near is the cushion, and that's the one he's on. So if this one goes in, seventy. Yeah, and he's nudged the other one out a little more. Only thirty points behind. Big moment in the match if he could win it at this visit. The sort of clearances that can make a big difference in any match, especially a final. Twenty-five. Perfect angle on the black. Well, he's just weighing up what to do here. He could play for the black, he could play for the blue, or play for the brown. He can get on either of those balls. Chose to play up for the blue. I always think it's easier to get to the yellow from the blue rather than the black. Forty. 
Fox and three. So, if you can get nicely on the blue, because the pink isn't on its spot. Awkward to get onto the pink. But that's just about where it wants to be. Won't need the black, so pink and sorry, blue and pink for what would be a great steal. Of course, he doesn't need the black. But he's finding lots of bits on the table. Well, you can understand him uh, taking care at this point. He knows this could be a big moment in this final. 52. It wasn't an easy ball that Robertson missed, but it could have cost him pink for frame. And that's a great clearance. Terrific clearance from Marco Fu. 58. He takes the frame. He's two in front again. He leads here in Bendigo. 6-4. Thank you. Frame 11. So the question, how will Neil You're Robertson awesome respond to, to what happened in that last frame where it broke Thank down you. 60. In the end, Fu cleared up with 58 to win it on the pink. So Fu leads 6-4. It's only first to nine, remember, so we're getting towards just starting to see the winning line approach. Certainly 7-4 would be a good lead. Sean Murphy said he played De Marco in the last 16. He said he played really well in that match. As I said, at the start of the final, his problem has been consistency. He's played some great matches down the years. At other times, just felt flat. He's not been there, and the results haven't gone his way. True of every player, I'm sure, but there are some players who can calm victories out. Mark Williams, when he was uh, world number one, didn't always play his best stuff. He was very good at winning matches when he was below par. We see Mark Selby as well do that last couple of years. Yes, it's how good your B game is, isn't it? That's uh, what makes the difference a lot of the times. Is this a little chance here? Difficult pot. But that was certainly a chance and it was a mistake from Robertson. He deliberately <laughs> left that red on. Well, so we've seen stats here, we saw Robertson have potted more balls and he scored more points but uh, I think the more pertinent stat would be balls missed because he missed one not easy in the last frame but he missed it and uh, didn't get another shot and Fu full of confidence so the last thing Robertson wanted to do was leave Six. any sort of pot on yes, it was a difficult one but there's a half chance. He's knocked it in, and he's in. Seven. I expected a little rub on the red to slow the cue ball down. Going to have to play a cannon now <coughs> to try and redeem position. And nicely played. I think he can get through the gap. 14. Well, maybe not. But he's got a red to the middle, and I think he's got one to the right corner. Well, that one 
these tanks as well. Yeah, good recovery. And look at the reds now. One thing that has changed in his life the last year has become a father for the first time. He and his wife, uh, Shirley, and their daughter, Alicia. That's the family. So uh, maybe a change of emphasis in his life as well as uh, his career. Shirley, uh, she came to the Championship League at Crondon Park, which was in the middle of the winter in the UK. It snowed. She'd never seen snow before. Went outside to take pictures. Everyone else was complaining about it, of course, but uh, <laughs> she was loving every minute. 21. <coughs> Although it wasn't so funny a few hours later when uh, their car got stuck on the driveway out of the golf club. He's just run out of position there. Cue ball may have had a big bounce off the cushion. 28. But he's run out of position. Thin cut to the left middle. I don't think the red will pass the blue into the ball corner. Well, he's got to take it on. Still a chance, this. Marco Fu, 28. Well, I still expected him to pot that. <coughs> left a red on to the right corner, maybe one to the left corner for Neil Robertson. Neither of them are easy. A big shot, this one. Missed it by a distance. And the red will pot to the left middle. Is he on the black? I think he is. And that was a very accurate positional shot he played there. Yep, he can see it. This is the awkward red, the one next to the black, to the left of the black. As he takes this one, black's available into both pockets. Nine. Seventeen. Well, that 
was an excellent shot he played there. He's developed those two reds and stayed on this one to the right corner. 23. 30. Thirty-one. Just seems to have a little bounce in his step now, Marco Fu. Thirty-eight. Yes, he's starting to play well. That clearance in the last frame was big, and uh, he's been very attacking in this frame. Robertson for once missed a long one after Fu's first visit at twenty-eight. This black, Robertson's going to need two snookers. Yes, he just took his time with that one, made sure of it. He knew the importance of that black. He's going to be going three frames in front. Doesn't mean to say he's going to win. Forty-seven. Well, he certainly played a lot better in this final than he did in his last one uh, in Germany against Ali Carter. And of course, uh, we send our best wishes to Ali, who uh, I'm sure many of you know is receiving treatment currently for testicular cancer. So. Get well soon, Ali. We hope to see you back playing very soon. Yes, absolutely. Looked to be a big bounce That's off the cushion there. Sixty-three. Well, he's disappointed. He wants a century. 70. He wants to really rub it in. 70. Not going to get a century, but the 70 will do. So Marco Fu is now three frames in front. He needs two more to win the title. He leads 7-4. Well, it's been uh, a really dramatic final, this. 8-6 to Marco Fu. He did lead 7-4. Uh, Robertson won the <coughs> next two, but uh, Fu won a 44-minute 14 to 14th frame. Horrible frame to lose, a long, scrappy frame like that. Robertson did lose it, but we know what a fighter he is, and he's got a fight now because this is his home tournament. He's two down with three to play. thing about Australian sportsmen they don't always win but they always try right to the end Well, he knew he could only leave the red he was playing on, but I expected him to get closer than that. But that long frame could have took its toll on both players. And as David said, it always hurts when you lose a long frame like that.
He's pushed the red over the corner, but he's managed to cover it. But he just might take this long red on, Marco Fu. Can't see the one over the pocket, but he can see the other one. Nope, can't be tempted. He's got a good cue ball. And again, he's left a red on. I don't think he's got any choice but to take it on. It's kind of a big pocket. The problem is that no easy way to get to a colour. The black's tied up, the pink's tied up. You can't impart enough screw on the cue ball to go around the back of the black. Great pot. <laughs> but he's not on a colour. It would have been, had the red gone in off the red. He'd have been nicely on the black. It's not easy, this, but maybe you could play the yellow. Well, that's as good as anything. He's covered the red over that left corner. Well, that's a mistake, but has he been fortunate? Raise of the hand says he has. Well, that is so fortunate. Could so easily have left the game on that. Not easy to get that cue ball down the table in the ball carrier safe. This is awkward.
it's certainly made even more awkward by the, the scoreline. He knows one mistake, or one half chance, and that could be it. He couldn't get that cue ball back up the table. But he's left an easy safety shot now for Marco Fu. He can put that cue ball anywhere he likes in the balk area. Oh, and that was so close. And so was that. <laughs> He's having a, a little bit of run at the moment, Marco Fu. <laughs> well, some of the faces in the crowd will tell you it's, it's agony when you're watching as well. <laughs> well, what a tough pot this is. And he's got to take it on. The black sat there waiting if he can find a way to see it. But that was a tough pot. And he's definitely left a chance this time for Marco Fu. The black's hanging there. Although ideally he'd like to play that red. That's on the black spot. One. Nicely played. Uh, he could take the black, but he wants to get rid of that red by the black spot first before potting the red, uh, before potting the black. Nicely on it. Six. Oh, what a let off. That was a real Marco chance for Marco Fu. Don't know why he felt he had to get close to the black. We don't see much reaction from him, but we saw it here. And that's why. <coughs> that was a chance to win the tournament. Well, once again, though, David, he hasn't left anything easy for Neil Robertson. Could so easily have left something easy there. of taking the long red on but that's full of danger if he misses that one could be under frame of match Extended rest, that's one thing uh, 
don't get in snooker these days, playing so much, unless, of course, you choose not to enter tournaments. But Neil Robertson, part of his success, I think, is that he has played in virtually everything. He's kept himself so sharp. Yes, he doesn't want to leave Mark Hofer with a chance of playing one of those long reds. Dead on the cushion behind the green. Looks favourite to me. If he leaves the cue ball where the red is now, he may force Mark Ofu into taking a red on. And look where the black is if he gets it. Done with that cue ball just being a couple of inches further towards the brown, but that's still a good safety. It too thick. Hence the cue ball Not going quite as close to the cushion as he would have liked. This long red is on to the right corner, but there's so much pressure on this red. If he doesn't get it, it could be end of frame of match. Has to go in. And it stayed out. He can't possibly get away with this one, and he hasn't. Will he get another chance, Neil Robertson? Well, it's down to this man now, Marco Fu. He went wrong uh, almost immediately the last chance he had. But he's in again. If he does win, <coughs> and it's still a big if at the moment, but if he does win, there are a couple of frames in the final, very scrappy frames, long frames that he won. The eighth frame was 42 minutes, and the last frame was 44 minutes. He won them both. Six. Which tells you his concentration has been good. His tactical play has certainly been good. And uh, the break building has been about same either side. So Robertson hasn't managed to impose himself as world number one. Point is, he's not playing some newcomer. He's playing a great player, a ranking tournament winner. As we mentioned earlier, top 16 player for most people. But he's still got to finish the job. Yes, and if he plays for the black... Not going to be easy to get to the Reds. Seven. Took a long, a long time over that shot, Marco Fu. Pretty sure he played for the blue. at the moment you can see things going wrong Marco Fouke he's 
trying to make sure of everything. Kill it off at this visit. Ten. Well, it has to make a difference if you've done it before, and he has done. He beat Ronnie O'Sullivan in the Grand Prix final 2007. the pink to go on the black spot but unfortunately it's out of commission 16 difficult to think at this stage of the match when the tournament's in your hands as it is now you could play for the blue here then play the cannon to the pink 7 Play the slow cannon to the pink, try and free the pink. He'd be very unfortunate not to be on a red. One to the left middle, one to the right corner. Again, trying to make <laughs> sure of everything. And hasn't quite come far enough. 22. He's gonna have to play the red to the left corner. And we saw Neil Robertson miss one of these earlier. They're not giving me these shots by any means. And it goes. Twenty eight. Well, he could play the cannon to the three reds there. <coughs> could play the cannon to the pink. Or could play for one of the loose reds. And all these thoughts are going through his head at the moment. Decided to play for the loose red. 34. gone wrong but if the red goes to the right center not sure if it does pretty sure he tried to miss the pink that time playing the cannon to the three reds coming off the cushion But he's got it. Great pot, that. Great recovery shot. What a time to pull out a pot like that. Just a fraction off. That would have stayed out. Had to go in, bang in the middle of the pocket, and it did do. 
I'd be tempted to take the black on here, but the pink's the one that will win him this frame of match. Well, again, that took a lot of bottle to take that pink on. And he's on this red to the left corner. 52 in front, so he's getting closer. 67 yeah. available. Well, this red and that black over the pocket would be enough, wouldn't it? Knew we left it there for a reason. Uh, if he takes the blue, he'll need another red. So, this red and Robertson's going to need a couple of snookers. Well, he's played so well in this break. Well, the whole match, but he's took these very well. Surely seals Neil Robertson's fate. Yes, it's been another good week uh, for Robertson, but obviously he's disappointed. This is his home tournament. He wanted to win for his home supporters, but uh, they've been very respectful of Marco Fu. <coughs> Something about this tournament, it's the nice guys tournament. Stuart Bingham won it two years ago. Barry Hawkins last year. Marco Fu. One of the nicest players you'll meet on the circuit. And there's no doubt now, he's the winner this year. 66. Oh, and it's all happening now. <laughs> well, suddenly it's the easiest game in the world. <laughs> But this has probably been his best break of the, of the final, particularly that recovery shot to the right centre. And what a time to produce a shot and a break like this. 71. Well, he can finish with a century. never really know which Marco Fu is going to show up, but this week it's been 75. the world-class Marco Fu. 77. And although it's not an Australian victory, the Australian crowd have appreciated what they've seen. Eighty-four. Eighty-nine. Well, what a delightful break to win it. Ninety-five. The Grand Prix 2007. This is his second world ranking title. Black to finish with a century. Terrific. Just a brilliant break, that, from Marco Fu. 102 to win the title. Disappointment on home soil for Neil Robertson, but Marco Fu...
has finished in style and he is the 2013 Australian Goldfields Snooker Open champion. Tough match against the world number one, but it's Fu who's done it. He's the winner by nine frames to six. Ask Councillor Rod Fife to present the runners-up medal to Mr Neil Robertson. So Neil Robertson, uh, the runner-up, as I say, disappointment. He wanted to win on home soil, but in general his form is just terrific at the moment. Three tournaments this season, Rod Fife three finals. The city of Bendigo. Now the winner's medal to Marco Fu. But it's Marco Fu who's the winner. He produced a really terrific break there, 102 in the last frame. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's the turn of the Right Honourable Damien Drum, MLC, Northern Victoria region, to present the 2013 Australian Goldfield Snooker Open trophy to the man who struck it rich in gold country this week. Will you please put your hands together one more time for our champion, Marco Fu. So the man from Happy Valley, Hong Kong, is a very happy man here in Bendigo, Australia. Lovely trophy, isn't it? And there's the smile on the face of Marco Fu. Warm applause from this, uh, of course, partisan crowd, but as I say, they appreciated the good snooker they saw, and Marco Fu is our champion. Well, our next snooker on Eurosport, July the 19th, will be in Rotterdam for the next European Tour event. So not long to wait for that, July the 19th, the Rotterdam uh, European Tour event. But uh, here in Australia, the winner was Marco Fu. Well done to him, his second world-ranking title from the whole Eurosport snooker team. It's goodbye.